Hey guys, welcome to the harbor, welcome to the studio. Today is a big day because yesterday Apple announced a bunch of new stuff and I wanted to take a look on all of these new things from the perspective of a music producer. So let's go up there to the studio and talk about it. We never used to be this way First up, let's get the boring stuff out of the way that was announced yesterday at the Worldwide Developer Conference in 2019. Of course, iOS got updated. Nothing really new, just like natural next steps, new emojis, dark mode. If they already start to showcase these kind of things, you know there will be nothing really interesting, absolutely nothing new interesting for music producers. The new Mac OS was announced, it's called Catalina and a lot of the features and new functions. The biggest one is 100% being able to use iPad apps on your Mac. This is actually huge because just think of the millions of apps that you can actually use on your iPad to make music. There are plenty of synthesizers only available for iPads, a lot of native instrument stuff, a lot of DJ apps, all of this will now also work on your Mac, which will definitely help to integrate these new approaches and techniques to making music into your current workflow with Logic, Cubase, or Ableton. Also really huge, iTunes is gone. Just a natural next step, actually. You will be now more focused on Apple Music, so if you want to listen to music, you actually have to stream it. You will be still able to play your old MP3s that you got in your folders. I got, for example, like, I don't know, 60, 70 gigabytes of, of music that I used to DJ and it's all organized in iTunes. So I might have to switch maybe to, to Pioneer's record box or the Denon software to actually prepare my sets for DJing. Apple TV was further introduced. Um, it's basically just a Netflix clone. I don't know if you've noticed, but lately Apple is just like copying more than innovating. They're, they're copying smart, but I don't know where, where this is actually going. I'm a huge, huge Apple fan. As you know, like my very first computers, this right here was my very first computer I ever made music with. That's like a long, long time ago. I got this with 13. And then the big next step up was actually this one right here, the tower. This one is a G5, but more than that later. And then the last huge thing that actually a lot of people don't really talk about it, but it's, it's huge, is voice control. They implemented a system for disabled people to voice control the entire Mac. That's huge. Actually, a friend of mine, he's disabled, he's a music producer, and he has a really, really hard time producing songs. And with the voice control, he might be able to do it faster. I'm not sure, because it will be hard if he listens to music, but maybe with headphones. I, I actually really don't know, but I, I like that they implemented it. Once it's out, I will I will try to produce a song just by... Ah, dentist appointment. Next up, Apple finally, finally listened. Last year, Apple introduced a new iPad, which was really great. It, it outperforms 90% of all of the other Mac portable um, laptops which is really great. I, I would love to switch because I, I actually hate my MacBook. It's the newest MacBook Pro, fully specced out, really, really expensive. And I just don't enjoy working with it. It overheats really fast, um, especially when I edit these videos. It just screams and, and the performance is really, really not usable to the max, so you pay for more performance, but can't use it because it's too warm. It's a huge issue. Everyone's complaining about it. I would actually love to, to switch to an iPad. I think they're fast enough for making music. Apple just needs to put Mac OS onto the iPad or actually make Final Cut available for the iPad, but in like a full version, being able to use plugins. But well, I actually don't see that coming. It's still kind of a, a weird product in between. Like I had an iPad myself, I don't use it, I sold it because like for the super mobile stuff, I just use my iPhone and if I need to work, it's it's the MacBook again. But they now separated iOS and introduced iPad OS, which is the right step. You can now um, use the mouse for it. I see it really, really handy and interesting for people that do music live performances to have like simple synthesizers, pads, 
maybe um, Y, X effects on the iPad. It's really great for, for these kind of purposes. I forgot how heavy this thing actually was, but this is my all-time favorite Mac that was ever made. It's the first one that had this tower design and Apple went kind of back to it. it it's referencing to this one a lot. Handles are similar, the cheese grate kind of thing is there. It's a beautiful, powerful machine. Absolutely no overheating issues. This this might be full of dust, but it's the very first original G5. There are multiple fans cooling this entire system in different zones. It's just, it's just beautiful. And up to this day, it's still running. It's still extremely fast. The only reason I'm not using it anymore, it's not mobile. I'm, I'm producing a lot in other people's studios or on the go or at home. And Apple just doesn't support it anymore. There's, there's no way to get the newest Logic version onto it doesn't support any 64 kind of apps. It got kind of crippled by Apple. I mean, this machine, I don't know how old it actually is, but probably 10 years, maybe even older. I don't actually know. But yeah, anyways, Apple is going back to it. You will be able to customize and, and like upgrade your Mac again, which is really great for pro users. I don't know what they were thinking about this trash can thing. But yeah, let's actually get this out of the way and talk about the new one that Apple introduced. It's called the Mac Pro. I like the design. I, I really like it, except for, for the feet at the bottom. I would have made it the same as on the top, just to make it symmetrical. As you know, I love symmetry. It's extremely powerful, no doubt. They showcased how many tracks of logic you can actually open up in it and play. It's like, it's insane. You can configure it, you can upgrade it, you can build stuff into it. That's all nice, but I was actually thinking like, would I buy it? And very, very, very likely not. First of all, it's extremely, extremely expensive. And that's nothing new, Apple, it's just expensive. But my old G5, I think it was like 4,000 euros back then. And in like one of the, the upgraded version with a bunch of stuff in it. And now the base model will be 6,000 euros. I mean dollars, but Apple um, unfortunately always just takes the same in Europe, just in euros, which makes everything a little more expensive. And if you put all of the good stuff into it, it will probably reach up to 30, 40, 50,000. And do you need that for music production? Definitely 100% no, absolutely not. Even the base model is total overkill for music production. Music is, is very simple. Even a raw photo will have more data than, than actually a song. If you work with audio, let's say you record a band, how many tracks do you actually need? Like, I mean, we, we got along with 24 for like the biggest part of, of music, the recording history. Let's say you need 50, maybe 60, maybe 100, but even my very, very old 2013 MacBook can actually handle this. Still, still up to date. It's, um, let me actually show you. So this right here, it's my old 2013 MacBook Pro. It sits here in the B studio to record vocals in the vocal booth. We record sometimes three, four, five mics at the same time handles it just fine. Even doing full tracks, putting Serum and Diva into it, it works, I'd say like up to 30, 40 tracks with like maybe 20 of it being like high CPU usage kind of plugins. Playing MIDI with it, it's, it's no issue. Like MIDI and all of the audio stuff is like old, old stuff from the 80s and, and it still works. I mean, really, it's just audio. You sing into the mic, the, the membrane starts vibrating, it's transferred into an electrical signal, goes into the sound card. There, there's not a lot to it. Like, I mean, yes, the plugins get more and more, like they need more CPU, but like what the Mac Pro offers is like 
way, 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 way too much. And you're paying for things you will never ever use. I mean, you just need a machine that is able to play back your music in real time. And even a four or five year old MacBook Pro can actually handle this just fine. Does it need to be faster than that? No, because like real time is all you need to achieve when it comes to audio. And you could now maybe argue that it's um, better to just get one Mac and, and have it last longer. Because switching systems, especially if you produce music, have a ton of plugins. You need to enter all of the codes, register them. Some plugins you can only use like two or three times on different machines. And every time you switch the computer, it will deduct one um, like kind of instance that you can actually use. So it makes sense to get a fast mas machine to not have to switch a lot. But then again, Apple will force you at a certain point to switch. And with the Mac Pros, the new ones, I think they will pretty fast switch the, the CPUs actually, because Apple like started building their own ones that are performing like crazy in the iPad Pro. And Intel is hitting more and more like a brick wall. They can't make the transistors smaller. Their processors um, are, are getting really warm. So I think Apple will eventually switch to their own, even the MacBooks and also the Mac Pro. And then again, they might not update it as long as they should. And then you have like a Mac Pro that costs like 15,000 euros and in six years, it just, just can't keep up. So the big question is, who is this machine actually for? I think it's for people that want to show off, have way too much money to spend and for like pros, but like pro, 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 like not the small video production company that maybe owns a rat and is doing like advertisement and music videos. It's more like really for like the Hollywood kind of pro where money doesn't, doesn't matter. You can especially see that by how at the Worldwide Developer Conference they, they try to advertise the new display, which is also very expensive. I'm sure it's beautiful. I'm sure it looks really good. But as a music producer, you just need something big so that you can see all of your tracks at once. The resolution doesn't matter really that much. But if you color grade movies, you definitely need something that shows you the colors in an accurate way that is calibrated. And it competes with monitors that cost like 30, 40,000 that are specially made to color grade Netflix TV shows and Hollywood movies. So for these kind of pros, the machine is actually made. Maybe even like huge, big, multi-million dollar studios will get these Mac Pros. But again, I think an iMac would be actually way more cost efficient. And a MacBook Pro, again, handles all audio tasks just fine. And it's mobile. I just love to take it with me, work somewhere else, work outside, get inspired so much faster. For example, every music producer I know, they're mostly electronic dance music producers, so mostly DJs touring a lot. They all work on, on a MacBook. Like they, they wouldn't even think about getting a desktop computer. It's really not necessary for audio. I mean, I'm, I'm still using outboard stuff and it's like just audio into the Mac. That's it. For video editing, when I edit these kind of vlogs, um, the MacBook is screaming. It, it can't handle it. So if you have to work with 4K, 8K footage on a regular basis and rendering times are important to you, again, if you get the Mac Pro, the rendering of your song might be faster, but with my MacBook, it's like two, three minutes for a full song. I don't need to, to shorten that to half the time. I'm happy to take every once in a while a break from music production. Rendering times never bothered me, even like 10 years ago. It's just not an issue with music. But if you render videos, rendering it for 30, 40 minutes or for 15 minutes, that already makes, makes a difference, definitely. Same for importing video files. So yeah, the MacBook Pro, video editing, and maybe um, like 3D modeling and this kind of stuff that needs a lot of performance, a lot of graphic performance, but definitely not for audio, really necessary. So yeah, that's it for today. I will go back to album production mode full on. If you're interested to see a little of my working process of the album, check out yesterday's video where I'm revealing one of the tracks. And also don't forget to tune in tomorrow. The daily grind, daily vlogging about my life as a music producer and DJ continues. Tomorrow, a review of a new plugin 
It's like, I can't even talk about it today because it's just being released tomorrow. So tomorrow I will be able to show it to you. It's it's cool. It, it's kind of, it's mixing for you, but um, top secret. Uh, uh,